there becomes difficult anyways so let's begin with circles and uh, uh i have again you know brought you this slide which talks about the mark distribution okay so you can see we have uh, completed algebra 20 marks we have completed trigonometry 12 marks so 32 in all so you can see number systems is six for rnr people there is no number system instead they have rational expressions and matrices so that's different for them coordinate geometry six marks geometry 15 marks this is where we are going to begin today geometry and then um, it's uh, area volume and all that so that's mensuration 10 statistics and probability 11 so this is how you know so uh, you can see in geometry again you have which all chapters you have triangles the most important one or the most dreaded one as well most of the people actually do not uh, feel themselves comfortable find themselves comfortable in triangles so we'll spend two classes there we'll go slow we'll talk at a very detailed manner triangles and because there is case study on uh, triangles most likely there will be a case study on triangle chapter as well so hence that is important chapter then construction and then this circles so we are going to take up circles today okay so again there is no deletion just for your information there has been nothing which has been taken away from the circles chapter so you have to go through the chapter in full so here there is no concession made to you okay now again the ritual is to go through the you know uh, the structure of the exam there are two parts ab 36 plus sorry 32 plus uh, 48 is the breakup 36 is 16 plus 16 16 one marker and four case studies with five questions each but you have to answer only four of them so 16 plus 16 32 and then there are six two markers seven three markers and three five markers so this is the breakup and internal choices is provided in two questions of two marks two questions of three marks and one question of five marks so you'll get three choices in the question paper okay and the four choices in the case study so please remember that okay now okay so let's begin so here is the uh, definition so all of you know what a circle is and a circle is a locus now people do get confused when i talk about things like locus so so this is locus what is a locus so circle is a locus of a point in a plane which is at a constant distance from a fixed point on the same plane so here i have tried to show you a small this is what it means so there is a point which is going around a point such that the distance between that moving point and uh, the so once again the distance between point p and a is always constant and if you if the point p is tracing that path that path is called the circle right so that's locus the word is locus greek origin locus means path path of a point in a plane so that's important because you can have similar such figures in 3d also so if you do not restrict it to a plane it will become a sphere so plane which is at a constant distance from a fixed point on the same plane okay this is important the constant distance is called radius you have studied since what lkg ukg kind of a thing no or in which grade did you study radius first so very early stage primary schooling and center of the circle so you know this so no spending time here oh sorry next yes so now uh, uh the in the ninth grade you studied more in detail the properties of circle like chords like you know what else uh, the arcs and the theorems related to that right the perpendicular to the chord and all that in 10th grade we took up uh, took another two vital component of uh, the circle which is or you know a part of circle you can say secant and tangent what is a secant so can, secant is nothing but a line which intersects a circle in two distinct points so if it is intersecting in two distinct points then uh, we call that secant so you can see pq here in the in the diagram here p and q i'm not able to hear you who's this so it's Aditi. Yeah, Aditi, what happened? You're not able to hear me? Hello? Am I audible? To you now? Yes. Everyone audible? Am I audible? Yes. Okay. 
Cool. So wait. Uh, okay, fellows. So <clears throat> what I was saying is, um, secant definition is clear to you. So every how many secants are possible then for a circle? How many secants can you draw to a circle? How many? How many circles can be drawn to? Oh, sorry. How many secants can be drawn to a circle? Okay. If I restrict, how many uh, to this question? How many? Secants can be drawn from one point on the plane. One point on the plane to the circle. How many secants? So let's say if I define a point here, this point. Oh, I don't. Well, let's say this point. This is visible. P or Q. So how many point? How many secants can I draw onto this circle through this infinite secants? Very good. What if the uh, point is on the circle? How many secants can be drawn? infinite again and what if the point is within the circle how many secants can be drawn so in all the cases there are infinite amount of secants you can draw onto a circle there is no restriction there are infinite amount of parallels parallel uh, secants as well infinite amount of you know mutually perpendicular secants and things like that so secants are infinite okay very good so what's the tangent tangent is a special case of secant so what's that special case so wait if i have to also show you through this, yeah. So let's say we have a circle with any given radius. So let's say this is the center and uh, we take a radius of five. Okay, what happened? I don't know. So wait. Okay, so need this. So what I'm saying is I'm drawing a circle. Circle from this point to let's say this point and then I am drawing a secant. Secant is nothing but to take any two points. This is a secant. Now, if I move this point and uh, let's say, let us, these are the points of, you know, intersection E and F. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, move this D point. So as I'm moving this point D, so you can see there, these are all secants, but now uh, E and F are moving together and there will be a point when they will get merged together. And that is where it becomes the tangent oh this is just losing the connect yeah so this is almost it's very difficult to actually restrict it to that but let us say yes so when e and f are merging together right now also this is a secant so there is some gap between the circle and yeah so you can see i can move this can't move this so this is secant okay secant and tangent so tangent is nothing but the limiting case when the two points merge together they become tangent to the circle, right? So how many tangents now? So this is the question. The tangent can be considered as a special case of a secant when the two points of the intersection coincide. Okay, now, um, so inside the circle, uh, there are zero tangents possible, right? So um, from inside of a circle, you cannot have any tangent drawn onto the circle. If the point is on the circle, then one tangent is possible. As you can see, if, this, if you consider this point E here or F here, only one tangent is possible. And if the point like D is outside, then there are two tangents possible. And the entire 10th grade syllabus around the circle is dependent on the properties of these tangents and secants. And tomorrow when you go to 11th grade, when you talk about, uh, let's say, when you will be doing conic sections, in conic sections, you will see, again, a uh, lot of application of tangents and normals and, and uh, secants and things like that. Okay, so let's go ahead. So what is the length of the tangent? Now we are defining something. It's called length of a tangent. What is length of the tangent? So from wherever you are drawing the tangent and the point has to be outside the circle. And uh, if you are drawing the tangent and uh, this point Q is called the point of contact. Now point of contact to the point from where you have drawn the tangent, that length of the segment will be called length of the tangent okay so don't think that the length of the tangent will be infinite no so how do we define length of a tangent from the point where you are drawing or you are uh, drawing the tangent and uh, you are measuring and the distance between that point to the point of contact is length of the tangent so let's begin our journey of theorems. There are 10 theorems related to circles, which you must know. And uh, in last last year, that is in board exams of 2019 March, there was question based on proving. And exactly this time, theorem one was um, there uh, as a, I think three or four marker will check this. That question is also there down there in the slides. So this is the first theorem. It says the tangent at any point of a circle is perpendicular to the radius through the point of contact. Now this radius is called the normal. 
right? So the radius, let me just change this color because it's too. Okay, so this is called normal. This one, OP is normal. What is it saying? The tangent at the at any point of a circle. So you can see PQ is the tangent here. And uh, they are saying that it will be perpendicular to the radius through the point of contact. Okay, so OP, you have to prove. To prove. OP is perpendicular to OQ. Okay. Anyone knows how to prove this, that OP is perpendicular to OQ. How do you prove that? So here we are going to use uh, what you learned in ninth grade. Euclid's some some theorems and some prop, you know uh, uh, postulates which Euclid had given, and what is that which you are going to use here to prove this particular theorem? Do you remember, guys? How do you prove that OP is perpendicular to OQ? Anyone can unmute and say, no problem. Yep. Anyone? No. No one is willing to prove this. Uh, shortest distance from O is perpendicular onto the line. So how do we prove that this is the shortest distance? Stress. So how do you prove that? Yes, so this is the uh, uh, theorem which, or this is the postulate which uh, Shreyas is talking about. So we are going to use that. So anyways, so what we are doing is, uh, we are taking a point on the tangent. Let's say that point is Q. So here is the proof. What is the proof? Right, yes. So let's take, let us consider. So in, uh, in geometry questions, the majority of the marks are lost in missing steps. So you have to be very, very thorough and methodical while writing geometry answers, okay? So let us consider a point Q on the tangent, okay? So clearly Q is outside the tangent. So clearly, clearly Q is outside the circle, right? Because the tangent by definition touches exactly at one point. So the P is that point, then obviously Q has to be outside the circle, right? Let, let uh, OQ intersect, intersect the circle, the circle at Q dash, okay? Then clearly OQ is greater than OQ dash, isn't it? OQ dash, which is equal to radius of the circle R. Okay, OQ dash is the radius, OP, right? This is what you can say. So OQ is, and why is this? You have to write the reason. Uh, sum is, or whole is, whole is, whole is greater than is greater than the part okay so whole is greater than the part now so oq is greater than op right right that means that means for any other q so you can write for any other point Q on the tangent, OQ is always greater than OP, right? So whether you take a point here or here or here, anywhere you take, you will find OQ greater than OP. Hence, hence OP is the shortest distance. Shortest distance to PQ from O, from O, hence, hence, what can we say? We can say OP is perpendicular to PQ. Okay, so you have to write a few more lines. You have to mention, uh, if you wish, you can mention Euclid's name as well. So this is where, right, any, any, any issues in proving this or understanding this proof? Right, so I have not written the given and the proof. There was no construction, so hence you just start like that. Bolo, any difficulty? Guys, any any difficulty? Any difficulty? Just give me some, you know, some some signal. Yes, yes, no, re-explanation needed, no doubt, whatever. Yep. Come on, guys. Energy, no doubt. 
no doubt all clear so hence uh, you can keep this in mind that whenever this kind of a theorem is there so you need to you know use the shortest distance route to prove perpendicularity let's go to the next theorem and it is a converse of the same and this theorem is used for construction which anyways we'll see later uh, what is that a line drawn through the end of radius and perpendicular to its it is a tangent to the circle so what are they saying a line drawn through the end of a radius so end of the radius is p and you're drawing a perpendicular on op right it's already given that it is 90 degrees so you have to prove you have to prove that pq is perpend uh, sorry pq is tangent to the circle okay so how do you prove this so this theorem can be used as i mentioned to construct tangents to a circle from points lying on the circle so later on in the next chapter in the circles construction chapter they will give you construct a tangent of a, on a radius let's say is a radius and some radius is given so you have to construct a tangent on it so how will you construct so you construct the circle take the radius and then draw the tangent like that right that construction is anyways we will discuss that okay so construction this is this is what it is used so who will prove it any idea on proving how to prove this one a line drawn through the end of a radius and perpendicular to it is a tangent to circle bolo how will you prove so you can use the previous theorem now for converse the best part is you can always use the previous theorem to prove this theorem is it so how will you prove any idea guys who has done it how will you prove that a line drawn through the end of a radius and perpendicular to it is tangent to the circle so hence you can use the contradiction route is it so what can you say you can say let let this line or first write all that basic things what are the basic things given what is given uh, op is a radius of circle with center o with center o okay and it is given that pq is perpendicular to op to prove what is to prove so i'm writing in short you don't write it so to prove you have to prove that uh pq is tangent pq is tangent to what uh the circle okay so if a point is there on the circle so what do you what are you, what are we trying to do we are trying to go through contradictory route contradiction you contradict some statement and you prove it so what are we going to do so we are saying that let let pq not be the tangent okay fair enough not be the tangent so if pq is not the tangent tangent right if pq is not the tangent and uh, p is on the circle that that means pq is a secant correct or not if something is not a if something is if some line is not a tangent and the one of the point is lying on the circle then the line has to be a secant agree all of you yep so if pq is a tangent then my logic would be then oh, sorry is a secant pq is a secant then uh, what what else can be thought of so if pq is a secant then yes how do we build this proof bolo build it guys you also participate so that it, it remains in your memory what else can be done so if let's say p, p is not a tangent or or you prove it with the shortest distance again yet again yep so you use the uh, same funda of shortest distance what is that shortest distance thing so either you prove that uh, is this pq is a secant is also a tangent so p and q will merge together then done okay then then you can do that or uh, you can construct another tangent p dash q dash through p and prove that p dash q dash coincides pq yes you can do that so so if pq is a secant then there will be so this is the logic yes rn that's what this is what we are going to do here so what you can do is let's say if pq is a secant then there exists a tangent which will be passing through p anyways okay so as you are suggesting you can call this as instead of pq you can uh, p dash q dash coin pq dash so let pq dash be the tangent let pq dash be the tangent if pq is not the tangent there will be one pq dash 
which will be tangent. There has to be one tangent passing through that point. That means what? Angle OPQ dash has to be 90 degrees. Isn't it? OPQ dash has to be 90 degrees. Why? Because of the previous theorem, we, what we proved that a tangent and a radius on the point of contact are perpendicular to each other. Are you guys getting this? The build of the logic, how am I building the logic? I'm saying let PQ is not the tangent. That means PQ is a secant. That means you can pass a tangent from point P to the circle. Let that tangent be PQ dash. So PQ dash is the tangent now. If PQ dash is the tangent, then angle O P Q dash is 90 degrees. But you're also saying O P Q is 90 degrees. Okay, what does it mean? What does it mean? If O P Q dash is 90 and O P Q is 90, that means if Q dash and Q are on the opposite sides, so there are two possibilities. No, let me just delete this part so that I get some space. So two possibilities. What are the possibilities? I will give you two proofs for this. So there are two possibilities. What are two possibilities? So the possibilities are something like this. If, the, if Q dash is, so let's say this is O, this is P, either Q dash is on this side opposite to Q, opposite to Q. And you are saying this is also 90 degree and this is also 90 degree. Then by linear pair, I can say Q dash P and Q lie on a straight line. Yes or no? Isn't it? Yeah. And let's say you said, no, why are you picking Q dash on this side? Instead of that, you take Q dash here. In that case, if both are 90 deg degrees, that means Q and Q dash coincide co are coincident. Isn't it? Because if one arm is common of an angle and two other arms are, you know, giving you the same angle, that means the two other arms are nothing but they are coincident. That means in the second case, this was one. And in second case, they are coincident. So in both the cases, tangent PQ, sorry, in both the cases, PQ and PQ dash are same lines or coincident lines. Am I right? So now you're saying PQ dash has a tangent and hence PQ has to be a tangent. Is this proof understood? So what did I do? I, con I went for contradiction. So how did I go for contradiction? So I said, okay, let, oh, let PQ not be the, not be the tangent. So if PQ is not the tangent, then that means PQ is a secant. And hence there will be one tangent passing through P. Let that be PQ dash. And then I said, and I used the previous theorem which we proved that OPQ dash will be 90 degrees. And OPQ will be 90 degrees. Both will be 90. This is given. This is given. So I can't deny this. And this is by this is by construction or let's say the previous theorem. So both are true. If both are true, then that means either Q dash PQ is a straight line or Q dash and Q are the same points. These are the two conclusions. And in both the cases, you prove that PQ and PQ dash are the same lines. And since you assumed PQ dash to be the tangent, hence PQ has to be the tangent. Clear? Proof is clear to everyone. You can also prove it through uh, the you know larger, smaller, the shortest distance route as well. So you will say that oh, since OP is, so this is another proof. OP is perpendicular to PQ. That means P is the shortest distance. P is the so shortest distance. That means any other point Q. So let's say in that case, you will get OQ is greater than OP. Once again, follow the proof. It is given that OP is perpendicular to PQ. Hence, P is the OP is the shortest distance. Then any other point on that line will be, you know, greater than OP. So OQ will always be greater than OP. And that is there. That means every other point. So OQ dash plus Q dash Q is greater than OP. That means, that means, what does this mean? This means that Q is an outside point, is a point outside the circle, always. So if all the points except P 
are outside the circle because it is immaterial of choice of q any q you take it will be outside the circle then if all the points lying on the line are outside the circle except p that means there is only one point of contact between the circle and the line and hence the line is tangent to the circle is the second way of proving clear so both ways you can prove is the second way clear guys anyone with doubt any doubt please ask please ask okay let's go to the next one this one now in one itself we can prove so many theorems related to this so what does this theorem say it says the lengths of tangents drawn from an external point to a circle are equal okay so what is meant by the length of the tangent we defined so length is nothing but they are they are saying they are saying this length pq is going to be equal to pr so there is a point p and you have drawn two tangents so how will you prove it who will prove this anyone so what is the basis of this proof that you have to prove that pq is equal to q pr yes so congruence so basically congruence so what you'll do is given and this was also asked in one of the papers so given is pq and pr are tangents to the circle with center o okay to prove pq is equal to pr so what construction we have to do some construction construction is pq sorry oq or and po joined okay now so the proof is in triangle which triangle pqo pqo and triangle pqo rop have i written correctly so right now uh, here it is okay you can write in this fashion but is the order of the vertices correct is this order order is correct pqo and rop are they congruent are these two triangle congruent yes or no no good so you have to write equivalent so p or corresponding p r o now it is okay p r o now it's fine okay so p q and p r o what do we know we know that o q is equal to o r why because these are radii of the same circle of same circle very good what's next uh angle o q p is equal to angle o r p is equal to 90 degree each and you have to mention that theorem so what is that theorem theorem is tangent and radius at the point of contact contact are perpendicular to each other okay so this you have to mention and what else op is equal to op common so by rsa no by sss true by sss is the right sss congruence criteria correct no rhs oh is it okay good so by rhs congruence criterion triangle what mm, pqo is congruent to triangle pro and hence the following what all so in one proof you can prove with multiple things the next theorem also so you can clearly say that pq is equal to pr first of all done what else can be said this can also be said that this angle is equal to this angle isn't it it's all cpct so this is alpha and then beta they are equal isn't it can i say that alpha is equal to beta can i say alpha is equal to beta and what else i can say this gamma is equal to this delta 
right? So alpha is also equal to beta. So this is another proof. And gamma is also equal to delta. These are the proofs. Okay. So the following theorem is regarding that only. See, two tangents are drawn from an external point. This can be given as a question. So they subtend equal angles at the center. So you can see this is PQ and it is equal. It is subtending angle alpha here. And uh, PR is another tangent and it is subtending an angle beta here. So alpha is equal to beta, same proof. And similarly, they are equally inclined to the line segment joining the center to the point. What does it mean? So this is the line segment joining the center to the point and both of them are equally inclined. So this is alpha gamma and this is delta, right? So we have proved on in the previous slide and PO is the bisector of angle QPR. Clearly PO or O lies Two and three mean the same. Two and three. Two and three. Yes. So there, so there are different types of ways they can ask you. So they can ask you prove that center lies on the angle bisector of the angle made by tangents drawn from the same point on the circle, right? So hence they can give you in different wordings. You have to draw the inference and accordingly solve. So this is, these are the three cases which will be there. So one PQ is equal to PR, alpha is equal to beta and gamma is equal to delta. So far, so good. Any doubt so far? So this is theorem number four, right? So in, in there are questions which are converted into, you know, so theorems which are converted into questions and given to you. Next. Now, and there are lots of questions based on this theorem as well. In two concentric circles, the chord of the larger circle, which touches the smaller circle is bisected at the point of contact. Okay, so what does this mean? So there are two concentric circles. What are concentric circles? Circles with the same center are called concentric circles in the same plane. That is, we are talking only, only a 2D case. So there could be circles with the same center, but they are not concentric circle. Can you give me an example? Cases where you know, uh, two circles are concentric, but they are not concentric, meaning same center. That's it. But in the typical uh, uh, parlance, we consider them to be planar structure. If they are not in the same plane, then we don't read them concentric as such as whatever we are, you know, treating them for here. But otherwise, there could be circles with the same center, right? So circles with the same center on the same plane will be called concentric circles. Okay. And what is the question? The chord of the larger circle. So this is the outer circle. So AB is the chord. You can see AB is the chord. And uh, it touches the smaller circle. That means AB is tangent to the smaller circle. You have to prove that AC is equal to BC or AC is equal to CB. So how do we prove that? It's We will use some theorems of our ninth grade, which we have studied already. So clearly, so let's say given. Given is... A B is A B no dot here. A B is tangent to smaller circle. Okay. And chord to the bigger circle. Okay. So and and it's what is given? Uh, yeah, so we have to prove to prove what that AC is equal to CB where C is point of contact contact. Okay, so proof, very simple proof, not a big deal. So what will you do? You will say um, since OC, sorry, since, uh, yeah, so OC is the radius and AB is the, AB is the tangent. Two smaller circle. Okay. So what does it mean? Circle, sorry, circle. So what does it mean? It means that OC will be perpendicular to 
AB, and hence the proof. Now we have learned that a perpendicular. Now OC is perpendicular to AB, meaning OC is per perpendicular cooler to chord AB. Therefore, OC will bisect AB. Why? Reason. Reason is perpendicular drawn on a chord from the center. From the center bisects the chord. You learned this in the previous grade. So hence done. Okay, so this is done. Okay, so this is another theorem. Theorem number five. Okay, let's go to the next one. The tangents drawn at the ends of a diameter of a circle are parallel. Theorem two. Theorem two. Yes, Aditya. Here is theorem two. Tell me. Repeat. Okay, so. Wait, so let me open this Microsoft. Huh. So let me repeat here. So let us say we have a circle. Okay. And here is the center. Here is the radius. And it's given that you have drawn 90 degrees. O, P, Q. Okay, so you have drawn a 90 degree to the radius. You have to prove that PQ is tangent. So I'm saying PQ is not the tangent. Okay, so PQ, if PQ is not the tangent, there will be only one tangent passing through the point. So if PQ is not the tangent, then there will be at least a line which is tangent at P, correct? So what is that point? Let's say this is the tangent, right? And I'm saying this is Q dash. So, Q dash PQ could be a tangent to the at this point P is so far so good, Aditya. Is it okay? Yeah. So when that is tangent, then with the previous theorem, we proved that OP Q dash angle is 90 degree by the theorem that uh, tangent and the radius at the point of contact will be perpendicular to each other. So this is OP Q dash is 90 degree. And you're also saying that OPQ is 90 degree. That means Q dash PQ is a straight line. Yes or no? 180 degrees, straight line. So if Q dash PQ is a straight line, that means both these lines, PQ dash and PQ are coincident lines. That means if we have assumed PQ dash to be the tangent, then PQ will be the tangent, right? Is this understood? Else you use this mechanism as well. So let us say you are taking a, you know, a point Q. Okay. Now clearly, and this is Q dash clearly OQ is greater than OQ dash and OQ hence is greater than OP. So any point Q you will find on the line is greater than is such that OQ is greater than OP. That means you can say Q is outside the circle. Right, Q is outside the circle. So if all the points are outside the circle except point P, which is lying on the circle, which what does it mean? Only P is a common point, common point between the circle and the line. Therefore, the line is tangent. Okay. Yes or no? Clear? Proof is clear? Shall we proceed? So let's go back to our... Yeah, this one. Tens drawn at the ends of a diameter of a circle are parallel. So should not be a big deal. What will you do in this case? So I'm not going to give you... Or you want me to... Um, okay, so let me give you a formal proof. So what is given? Uh, oh, this is at the end of the diameter, right? Uh, huh. 
okay anyways so uh, yes so you can given what is given given is uh, cd is a diameter cd is diameter and ef and edf you can write like this also 3 points so just to edf and acb are tangents at point b and c respectively okay therefore you can say to prove what is to prove to prove that ef is parallel to ab how to prove proof right so you join this line anyways so anyways now you can see od is perpendicular to ef and you have to give the region radius and radius and tangent at the point of contact point of contact radius and tangent at the point of contact are perpendicular to each other okay so od is perpendicular to ef and oc is perpendicular to ab so you can say angle ode is equal to 90 degrees and angle oca is equal to 90 degrees right and now either you use interior angle or cointerior angle to be supplementary and things like that you will get right so since angle ode plus angle oca is equal to 180 degrees therefore you can declare what ed is parallel to ac and since these are lines so hence you can say ef is parallel to ab and what is the reason co interior angles on a transversal on a transversal or supplementary okay guys clear so this is why they will be always parallel so two tangents drawn and you can see that not a big deal so let's say if i draw a line from a yeah so if you see no uh, uh let me draw a line perpendicular to this yes so this yeah so you can keep rotating point d sorry oh i did not do this part so if you change d it is not becoming the tangent okay never mind so let me prove it so what you do is draw a tangent from here from c to this yes these are the two tangents you can see there are two tangents now and what is that let me uh, take this off so this is not needed yeah and then um, what do i need to do uh, construct a parallel line or let's say construct a diameter so how to construct a diameter uh, join this point e and construct a line so e and a perfect and now this is the point of contact again and from here draw the point of contact drawn and then line perpendicular to this so perpendicular to this point on this yeah so these are the two so hence what i was trying to tell you is even if you rotate cc it will always be parallel correct see so any case it is going to be parallel only so still this diameter is there at the end of the diameter anywhere you will see parallel tangents always okay done next line segment joining the points of contact of two parallel tangent circle is diameter of the circle yes so this is the con the converse of this so converse of the previous theorem what is that the line segment joining the points of contact of two parallel tangent is a diameter of the circle how do we prove that this is a diameter of the circle so first of all they are parallel so this is given yeah anyone anyone would like to prove it come on yeah participate what happened guys lack of energy so there are you there or feeling bored yes or no everybody has gone 
some indian indian australia cricket match is going on no so match is going on right now india versus australia who's winning so you're watching match also okay aryan is saying now what ha- what happened to others there are lots of people who are not not uh, communicating at all guys you there let me see your energy why at least say something hello yes you there only akshita is there okay ralph aiden navya meeda hi saying okay mumita is also there guys you are understanding not understanding making sense to you or not hello people 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 yep so what's the score current score anyone is watching the india australia match or is it happening right now or no people are sleeping over there i don't know so anyone is following no one or oh, stumps oh already yeah who watch watches test are right? test match is the best class of cricket okay it's already oh i see i thought it's going on right now so old people who retired 10 years ago who who old people oh they people watch uh, hey no i also watch test cricket yeah so india mostly losing difficult position oh is it sad not like 36 all out no next this time around or same thing 36 all out that was really great great day for india 36 all not like it. oh jari jadeja carried the batting well oh is it so you are following that means yes good so fair enough chalo come back so too many injuries oh who got injured bhai virat kohli is playing or not no he is playing or not playing i have not no clue pant got injured okay australia leading by 197 okay oh anyways virat kohli is busy being <laughs> Oh my god this is mean aryan why do you say like that it is he should be there only you know cricket is important or child is important anyway so um what was yes so how do we prove kya karenge tell me what do we do somebody just said something somebody said how to prove how what what will you do how will you prove you will again go for a contradiction maybe so what you will do is this so again let us say that let us say that uh, you know uh, it's not a diameter let us say let us say that given is uh, it is given that ef is ab is parallel to ef and they are tangent ab and ef are tangent ef are tangents okay this is given right tangents to the circle okay and uh, we have to prove to prove what to prove what dc is the diameter dc is the diameter and what is uh, d and c diameter so what is d and c b is d and c are the points of contact very good so what will you say you will start with saying uh, let it be not right so you'll start with what proof you will say uh, let dc not be the diameter let dc not be the diameter okay so that means uh, you must have another center somewhere let us say this is the center some exaggerated view but let's say this is the center o dash so let o dash be the center let o dash be the center be the center okay so clearly what will you say you will say o dash d and join this these two okay so what can we say now so therefore o dash d f is equal to 90 degrees okay o dash d f is 90 degrees we have to reason, write the reason and then also but 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 odf is also 90 degrees angle 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 odf is also 90 degrees why given right it's given and why is it given because you have mentioned somewhere that uh, you know uh, oh is it given yeah it is given why is it given because you are dc dc is the line joining the 
uh, DC is the shortest distance between EF, isn't it? So you have to prove, you have to, you have to mention that somewhere that DC is the line joining, or DC is the shortest distance between EF. That's what you are saying. Okay, fair enough. That means how this is these two are possible when O dash DF is also ninety degree. How can that be possible? This is also ninety degree. This is also ninety degrees. With the same common arm, two angles are equal only when, if they are on the opposite side. That means if O dash were here, this side, somewhere here, then so you could have said that okay, these two angles are equal. But O dash and O are on the same side, and there is a common arm to the angle. That means O dash and O must coincide. So O dash and O must coincide. And since O dash was the center. So now you are saying O dash and O are coincident. That means O is the center. Does that make sense? Did you understand? How did we prove that they are? Uh, sir, they haven't. They have given DC shortest distance. No. So what? What you are assuming is line segment joining the point of contact. Point of contact of two parallel. Wait a minute. Tangent to a circle is diameter to the circle, so hence there are two points of contact, and you are joining them. Now uh, a line and end is diameter using linear pair. Uh, sorry. Uh, yes, Prishim is asking good question. The question is, it's not given that this is the shortest distance, isn't it? So what do we? Do? so hence can we assume that this is how do we prove that that is the shortest distance so line joining the two or oh, wait a minute line segment joining the points of contact okay of two parallel theek hmm. hai okay 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 uh oh, oh, oh. Hmm. yes so how do we C uh C O D. What are you saying? C O D is the line, and hence they are tangents. Yes, they are. This is given that they are tangent, but yes, this is a fair enough question. How do we prove? Because we have assumed that they are shortest distance. So okay. So uh, the line segment joining the points of contact of two parallel. So they are parallel. Okay, fair enough. Yes. देखो. You will do like this, uh, Prishim. So or for all for. For all of you, so let's say this is these two are line, these two are parallel lines, and this is the transversal. This is the transversal, okay? The the joining point of contact. So now, so these two must be. So what what all do we know? So this angle has to be equal to this angle, isn't it? And and because of there is no reason why. uh you know uh this angle is x then this angle also has to be x this one this has to be x Can, is my logic correct if this angle is x this angle should also be x why because these are two parallel tangents and there is no reason which which tangent to be given as preference are you getting the logic so both the angles must be the line joining the point of contact must be inclined equally to both the tangents am i right yes or no yes or no yes why because dekho this is another way i am saying this let us say there are two tangents what did we see we saw that the two tangents are equally inclined to the line joining the point of you know the point from where the tangents are originating and the center so this angle is if you remember gamma is equal to delta okay so if there are two tangents if there are two tangents they are parallel to each other then they are equally inclined to the line joining the point of contact am i making sense right so this angle x and this angle is equal to x they are equally inclined inclined to the Isn't it, guys? Bolo. So they are equal. They are equal. Very good. And they are parallel also. 
the the tangents are parallel so that means 2x is equal to 180 degrees so x is equal to 90 degrees got the logic so so if x is 90 degrees that means this line dc is the shortest distance anyways or even if you don't write that dc is the shortest distance you can say anyways now you are you have proved that od is perpendicular to ed or ef so either way your job is done yeah you are so you have to prove that od is perpendicular to ef that's it so the moment you prove that you now know that o angle odf is 90 degrees but you are contradicting yourself when you're saying no angle o dash df is equal to 90 degrees because you are not ready to assume or are not ready to accept o as the center so you're saying no the center lies somewhere else and that center is o dash i'm saying fair enough that means o dash df must be 90 but you just proved this odf is 90 how is that possible for a for two angles whose there is one only one one common arm is there and there are two different points is that possible that both of them are equal uh without being coincident so how are equal angles what are the possibilities either angles are like this x and x or if the the second arm is on the same side then there is no other way alternative but the two to be coincident is it okay yes or no Did you understand this entire proof? All of you are comfortable, not comfortable. Tell me any part. I'll repeat again from there. Which part is not comfortable? All comfortable? Yes, no. Any part? If you don't want to send a message in public, you can send a message privately to me. I will not take your name. Don't worry. But you please eliminate all your doubts right away. Do not revise this multiple number of times. Only go through this PPT towards the end of your preparation. When I mean, you're going to face the exam, it's good enough. Bolo, any doubt, please send me a private note. You can do that in the chat. I will not take your name. Don't worry. Okay. So please make sure that you are thorough. Uh, once again. Okay. Yes, I will. I will repeat the entire entire proof linear pair way what is that a linear pair thing you can explain Meghna, no worries you can do if you are comfortable please do no problem Bolo. prove dc a straight line dc a straight line yes prove it please how do you prove unmute and say oh you are not even sure oh you're not sure anyone else wants to prove it Chalo, let's let's try to prove this dc is a straight line yes how so let us take this let us take it here control a delete Okay, so let's try this. Uh, is this the only way to prove or we can do any alternate way um, RA until it makes sense? Logic has to be correct. So let us say this is a, oh, this circle did not. Please, please do linear pair, whichever way you are comfortable. So let us say this is the tangent. This is the tangent. Okay. What is that linear pair thingy do you, are you saying? Chalo, let's see. So this is the line joining the point of contact. Let us say E F it was E right E. Uh, sir, can we draw another line Z O parallel to E F and A B like that? Okay, chalo. no problem. E F A B. And uh, what is that? So draw line Z O parallel to P. Achha, theek hai. Just like that. Okay, parallel. Then you can prove through linear pair. How? So let us, this is something E F G H. Let's say. This is O and this was, I think, what was the name? D and C. C, D. C, D is a straight line. Okay, so fair enough. So you are drawing this. So uh -huh. now what, what is the build of the proof? How do you, what is the first step? I drew GH parallel. Now tell me. Constructed OG parallel to both tangents. Yes, now. Corresponding angles, axiom, linear pair theory. The corresponding axle. Well, what is that corresponding axiom here? Angle. Well, oh, so you are assuming this to be a. But this this will be ninety degree only when there is O is point O is the center. But that's not that's the question. O has to be proven to be center. So we can't start with this ninety degree. So where what is the linear pair thing? Please come again. Unmute and say it's better. Unmute. Are you intended? 
Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Ah, yes, I can. Go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, we are assuming that O is the center itself. We are not taking that O is not the center. We are trying to prove here that CD uh, is a straight line and hence it is a diagonal. Oh, yes. Ah, that then then's fine. Yes, CD is a straight line, but then CD is not the line joining the point of contact. Then no. Understood. So you are starting with the. So you are saying forget about you know straight line joining CD. Okay, so you are saying there are two parallel tangents. Yes. Sir. Take take the center O and join the center with the point of contact, and then draw a parallel GH, a line parallel, a line GH parallel to EF and AB. Fair enough. But in that case, do not say that CD is the uh, line joining the point of contact. Okay. Then eventually you prove that. Yes. Right. Sir. So hence. You will you will say that okay so hence yes then it it follows correctly so OD is perpendicular to what uh, DF yes sir no sorry ha huh? OD is perpendicular to DF and also uh, since OD is perpendicular to DF and DF is perpendicular DF is parallel to uh, OG or OH therefore. OD is also perpendicular to DF. I'm sorry. What is the other one? OH. OD is also perpendicular to OH. So this is 90 degrees. Similarly, similarly, you can prove similarly. OC is perpendicular to CD, and CB is parallel to OH. Therefore. OC has to be perpendicular to CB. Sorry, OH. OH. So this is so you can now say that angle DOH plus angle COH is equal to ninety plus ninety. That is one eighty degrees. Hence, hence DC is a straight line. DC is a straight, straight. line now you have to say but dc is a diameter which is also the line joining the two points of contact okay so hence proof you didn't send so initially we cannot start with dc to be a straight line So forget about DC. So eventually you prove that uh, DC co is coming out to be a uh, straight line. In my proof, I started with the assumption that DC is a straight line, and since there are two parallel tangents and uh, D and C are on the you know uh, opposite sides of the, or let's say um, uh, the two parallel tangents will always be equally inclined to the point of contact. So hence. Uh, we I consider that to be the shorter distance, or already proved that that is ninety degree. Then to contradiction rule, both are whichever you you can remember, you are comfortable. Please do that. Now, angle between the two tangents from an external point to a circle is supplementary to the angle subtended by the line segments joining the point of contact to the center. What does it mean? It means that now let us quickly prove this. You mean that this angle here, this alpha. Plus beta is 180 degrees. So prove that alpha plus beta is 180 degrees. That is what they are saying. What are they saying? Angle between the two tangents, right? Angle between the two tangents drawn from an external point to a circle is supplementary. So beta is the first angle they are talking about. Is supplementary to the angle subtended by the line segments joining the point of contact to the center. So this is the line segment joining the point of contact. And the angle subtended by AB on O is alpha. So you have to prove that alpha beta is 180 degree. Very easy. Yes, someone is saying Aditya is saying angle sum property. Very good. So you already know that angle A, angle A plus angle B plus angle or I have mentioned alpha. So alpha plus beta is 360 degree. But you already know that angle A is 90 degrees. Angle B is 90 degrees. So hence this 90 and this 90. So alpha plus beta will be. 360 degrees minus angle A minus angle B, which is 180 degrees, right? 
since angle A is equal to angle B is equal to 90 degrees. Okay, so this should not be a big deal. Let's go to the next one. There is only one and only one tangent and any point of any point on the circumference of a circle. How do we prove it? Again, let there be two points or let there be two tangents. From there you can start. Or uh, there is one and only one tangent at any point on the circumference of the circle. What will you do here? So you can go through a contradiction route. Then let there be two tangents. Okay. So let's say PQ is one tangent. Uh, is, it, is this similar to theorem two? Yes. Somewhat. Yes. So you can, you know, you can say that. So what I'm saying is, yeah. So let there be two tangents. What all? PQ and let's say another one. PQ dash. Let there be two. So if there, if there are two tangent tangents, then we know that angle again, same thing. OPQ is equal to 90 degrees. And similarly, OPQ dash will also be 90 degrees. But this will contradict again. Why? This is possible only when Q and Q dash are coincident. Did you understand? Right? So contradiction. By contradiction, you can prove. So far, so good, guys. Any any difficulty? So we're quickly covering the theorems. Last one. The perpendicular at the point of contact of a tangent to a circle passes through the center. Okay. So again, let it not pass through the center. Very easy. These are very easy proofs. Perpendicular at the point of contact of the tangent to a circle pass through the center. So again, let it not pass through the center. Okay. So let's say if it is not passing through the center, let us say, um, yeah. So uh, then you join the center and point P. Yeah. Join the center and let's say, then we here we are getting QPT is 90 degree. Why? This is given that the perpendicular at the point of contact of the tank. We are already assuming that let, let QP be perpendicular to PP. Okay. But we are saying QP is not containing the center. Okay. But QP doesn't, sorry, QP doesn't carry or pass through the center. Okay. So let P O R uh, be the diameter. B B diameter. So clearly, clearly what O is the center. So that means angle OPT must be equal to 90 degrees by the theorem. But you are saying QPT is 90 degree by given. Right? OPT is 90 degree matlab angle RPT RPT is 90 degrees and you are also saying angle QPT is 90 degrees. Both are possible. When? When are these two possible? When R and Q coincident. Right? Clear? All theorems, these are the set of 10 theorems which are there in the chapter of circles. Let big, let's now go to question. Easy one, application, one marker. Usually the questions are uh, definitely one marker, one plus three or two plus two. Not more than four marks question will be there. There were, there were cases where, or exams or years where there were five marks questions as well. Yes, 56 centimeter is the right answer, right? So clearly, PQ is equal to PT is equal to 28 centimeter. And you have to mention the reason. Tangents on a circle from same external point are equal. Okay. And now uh, perimeter. Perimeter is P. L plus L M plus M P. So P L plus L M can be, sorry, this is L uh, L M can be written as L N plus N M plus M P. So this is equal to P L plus L Q 
isn't it? So L is the external point from where two tangents are drawn. So two, oh, two tangents are drawn. So like this L, L, so they are equal. PL plus LQ plus NM, colliculo MT plus MP and club them together, put the brackets also to emphasize. So PL plus LQ is PQ plus PT is equal to 2PQ is equal to 56 centimeters. Good. One marks with you. So one done. This is question for so total two. If two tangents are inclined at 60 degree, two tangents are inclined at 60 degree are drawn to a circle of radius three centimeters and find the length of each tangent. So quickly draw the diagram. Do not forget to draw diagrams. Okay. Two tangents are inclined at 60 degree. So each one of them are inclined then at 30, 30 degrees. So this is 30, this is 30, isn't it? So radius three centimeters. What is radius? This is three. So this is 90 degrees. So you are used trigonometry. Find the length of each tangent. So this is length L, right? So batao, three upon L is tan 30, no? Three upon L is 1030, yes or no? 1030. So 3 upon L is equal to 1 upon root 3. So L is 3 root 3 centimeter. All of you getting it? 3 root 3. Okay, trigonometry. Fair enough. Chali, 1, 1, 2 marks done. This is, this was in OR. So let's say total is three. PQ is a tangent to a circle with center O at point P. If triangle o, OPQ is an isosceles triangle, then find OQP. So clearly PQ is a tangent to a circle with center O. So quickly a circle O. PQ is a tangent to a circle. This is O at point P. If triangle OPQ, O P Q is an isosceles triangle. Then find O Q P. Aray, yeah, this is very easy. O Q P. What is this? 45 degrees. Isn't it? So it's given that P Q is tangent. So P Q and triangle O P Q is isosceles. Isosceles only, only cases this will be equal to this. There is absolutely no other way because O Q is going to be hypotenuse and this is 90. So Fair enough, if 90, so this angle is 45 degrees. This is also 45 degrees. Okay, clear. So three marks in your kitty. Next. All of you are okay. Am I going fast, guys? Tell me. Are you able to cope up quick? Any doubt, please send, keep sending your doubts to me privately also. No need to worry that, okay, I am lagging behind. You can always go, by, go back and watch this video. There are lots of questions, 20 plus questions. So let's try to solve them all. Can you can you slow down a bit? Okay, okay. Chalo, slow it, slowing down with the next question. Do it. In the figure, quadrilateral ABCD is a circumscribing is a circumscribing a circle with center O, and AD is perpendicular to AB. Where is AB, by the way? This is B. If radius of in circle is 10 centimeter, then the value of X is, find out the value of X guys. Aditi, no. Everyone is saying 21. Okay. Why 21? Why 21? Okay, anyways, it's easy. 
वाई बिकॉज देखो दिस विल बी इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी सेवन वाई इक्वल टेंजेंट्स आर इक्वल फ्रॉम द सेम पॉइंट सो सी इज द पॉइंट फ्रॉम वेयर टू टेंजेंट्स आर ड्रॉन सो सी आर इज इक्वल टू सी क्यू इज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी सेवन सेंटीमीटर सो ऑब्वियसली बी क्यू विल बी इक्वल टू थर्टी एट माइनस ट्वेंटी सेवन विच इज इलेवन सेंटीमीटर सो बी क्यू इज इलेवन सो इफ बी क्यू इज इलेवन देन माई डियर फ्रेंड क्यू पी इज ऑल्सो इलेवन same logic everywhere same tangents drawn to a circle from the same point are equal so bp oh sorry bq ne bq ha oh sorry bp 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 is equal to bq yes bp is equal to bq 11 so what is ab x is equal to ap plus pb or bp now clearly ap is 10 why Complete the square. So AP is ten. So ten plus eleven, twenty-one centimeter. But you have to also prove that AP is ten. So don't really write it. You have to prove why AP is ten. Why is AP ten? Can anyone tell me why is AP ten? So you can basically complete the square, drop a perpendicular from, or join OP. So OPAS is a square. Why? Why? Why is it a square? Why is it a square for that matter? Because O P A S me A P is equal to A S, and it's a rectangle. Is a rectangle. Why it is a rectangle? Because there are so many ninety degrees. Rectangle. Why? Because angle A is equal to ninety degrees, and angle O P A is equal to ninety degrees. And angle O S A is equal to ninety degrees. So it's a rectangle with A P is equal to A S. That means, therefore, O P A S is a square. Hence, that is ten. Clear? Very good. So Aditi, chali next. This is one mark again. Actual board paper twenty twenty. B C is equal to. All of you are getting ten centimeters. This is one marker, so should not be a big deal. Again, so what is this? Clearly, AP is equal to AR is equal to four centimeter. Okay, that means RC is equal to AC minus. So this is one marker, but still, let's say it comes for two markers, then write these steps. So R C is equal to A C minus A R is equal to eleven centimeter minus four. That is seven centimeter. Okay, that means R C is equal to Q C is equal to seven centimeter. Similarly, B Q or B Q B P B P is equal to B Q is equal to three centimeter. Now B C is equal to B Q plus Q C. Is equal to three plus seven, ten centimeter. Now is the pace okay, or I'm still going fast? Tell me, guys. Shall I slow down more? You want some more time? Yes or no? Is it fine with all, or you want me to slow down further? No problem. Okay, chalo. Let's do it. This is two marks. Two tangents TP and TQ are drawn to a circle with center O. From an external proof that PTQ is twice OPQ. Proving question, two marks. So to write given proof, construction, all that stuff. Just write done when done.
done okay very good this particular question or the theme of this question you are going to use a lot in physics this year the coming year hmm so prishan srishti sai rishita satyam all of you have done very good yes you can use asp also i think done anirudh sai done siddharth kartik done alisha prakash done very good arjun akshita dan very good come on come on filaz chalo chalo dan not dan you can send me uh, if you don't want to post your this thing in the group send me at least privately so that i can understand whether you are um with the pace so please make sure that you respond back to me okay guys done or not done still struggling join to or you don't need to join join oq also that's done so i'll see okay so to p t q no ha dekho now P T Q in triangle P T Q. P T is equal to T Q. Hence, angle T P Q is equal to angle T Q P. Correct? Is equal to long method. Why? This is equal to half of one eighty degrees minus uh, angle P T Q. Yes or no, guys? Is it okay? Is it okay? Angle T P Q is equal to angle. Yep. Okay. Now come to triangle O P Q. Since O P is equal to O Q, they are a radius. Therefore, angle O P Q is equal to angle O Q P is equal to one eighty degrees minus. Angle POQ by two. Okay. Yes or no? Bolo, dosto. Right. So from here, there are two three methods you can follow. Okay. Or else, what you can otherwise do is you can also write this as instead of this, you can write this as OPQ is ninety degrees minus angle. O uh, Q P T angle Q P T is it okay? There go once again. I am writing. What I am writing? Just just pay attention. This is ninety degree, guys. So angle O P Q O P Q is equal to ninety degrees minus angle Q P T. Right or wrong? Right or wrong? Correct? Yes or no? Correct or right all of you all of you are with me on this okay next angle o q p is equal to 90 degrees minus angle uh p q t or ah uh, p q t right is it now um add both of them so o p q plus o OPQ plus OQP. Can it be written as triangle two times angle OPQ? LHS. If you add, both are equal, so I can add that. And here it is one eighty degrees minus one eighty degrees minus two times triangle two times triangle QPT angle QPT. Right, right. Or let it be like this angle. This only this will help. PQT. So one eighty degrees minus QPT TPQ is nothing but angle PTQ. 
right? Did you understand? So I wrote this, I wrote this added, I got 90 plus 90, 180 minus QPT and minus PQT. So 180 minus QPT is this minus this is nothing but this angle. So angle PTQ. Understood, not understood. Send me each one of you, please respond, respond so that, you know, things should be clear. Okay, clear, clear to everyone. So this was two marker. Okay, next, next. Do this easy, one mark. Pythagoras theorem and this simple. PB is equal to, this is like you have to do mentally. Mm, mm, mm. PB is equal to, yeah, good, mentally. So AP is clearly four, why four? Because this is 90 degree, why 90 degree? Because OP is perpendicular to AB, why? Because at the point of contact, radius and tangent are perpendicular. Okay, so hence this is four and this also will be four, why? Because previous question once, okay, I'll show you. So is this clear to everyone? This question is four centimeter. Any doubt in this? This one, I will go to the previous one, don't worry. Is this clear to everyone? Four, why it is four? OP bisects AB, we learned in grade nine that a chord is bisected by the perpendicular dropped from the center onto it. Okay, so OP is perpendicular to AB, hence clearly AP is equal to PB from ninth grade stuff. And AP is equal to four. So. PB is four. Okay, going to previous one. Once again, let me uh, clear this up. Wait. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, yeah. let me use this space. Oh no, wait. When I'm spending time, I should do it properly. Unfortunately, the presentation PowerPoints do not have that good scribbling mechanism, so hence becomes difficult at times, but never mind. Okay, so I have cleared some space now. Once again, I have joined OQ. Now I know that this is 90 degrees. This is 90 degrees. So I am writing angle O P Q is equal to 90 degrees minus angle Q P T. This is clear. I hope this is clear Q P T observe and you will get it Q P T right angle. Similarly angle O Q P O Q P is equal to 90 degrees minus angle P Q T. Okay. Now I simply added them. So OPQ and Q, OPQ plus OQP is equal to 90 plus 90 minus angle QPT plus PQT. Okay. Now OPQ and Q, OQP both are equal, right? So hence I can write this as two angle OPQ. Why? Because OP is equal to OQ. Hence, angle OPQ will be equal to angle OQP. Okay. Now, in the right hand side, I have 180 degrees minus angle QPT. So, observe QPT. Where is QPT? This. And where is PQT? This. So, this you are adding and subtracting from 180 degrees. Don't you think that is nothing but this angle? So, Right, 180 minus PQT. Right, so you can write this since angle QPT plus angle PQT plus angle T, let's say, is 180 degrees. So angle T will be 180 degrees minus angle QPT plus angle PQT. Right, so instead of this here, I'm writing angle T, and angle T is PT. Okay, good. Next. This one. 
थ्री मार्क्स so there was no diagram given for this figure so you imagine how how this will be done okay i hope you are able to draw the diagram only two people three okay think about it the circle touches the side bc of a triangle so the circle is outside the triangle because it is also touching extended sides right you need to get the diagram first so first draw a triangle abc a b c and they are saying there is a circle which is touching what a uh, side bc of a triangle so there are two possibilities either the circle is like this or the circle is like that now if in the first case it will not touch the extended sides in only in the second case it will touch the extended sides a b and b c so the circle is something like this this will be the circle this will be the diagram there is some center here okay so let us say this point is b this is c let us say this is what is this point this is p and uh, ab extended is q and r this is the diagram if you have drawn the diagram correctly you will be able to do it so aq right so aq is equal to ar clearly why tangents drawn from the same point from an external point onto a circle are equal similarly if you see bq is equal to bp and uh, pc is equal to cr using these three you can prove aq so if you start from rhs ab plus bc plus ca half is equal to half of ab plus bc can be written as bp plus pc plus ca this is half ab plus bp now bp can be written as bq and pc can be written as cr plus ca similar question we just did above where there was a numerical based question now if you see this is half ab plus bq is aq 
and this one ac plus cr is ar but aq ar are themselves same so half into twice aq so hence aq okay so what was the catch of the problem first to draw the diagram so let's say when you when you were drawing the diagram let's say you are thinking you are not able to crack it in the first instance then let's say if you are drawing a circle like that but if you draw a circle like that it is knowing not, never going to intersect the extended sides so hence the circle has to be on the other side okay and we draw the diagram and then the moment you got this you know the technique now so there are tangents multiple equal tangents are being seen so that should give you a hint that you have to approach like that so av and we saw a problem over in the previous slides also so use the only only one underlying concept that tangents from the point to a circle are equal and instead of starting from here to go here you start from here and go there and it was easy i hope is this question understood so please try to map it in your brain right now okay so when you do multiple number of times you will be familiar with these kind of questions as well one mark should not be much of a time consuming question exactly same thing we did previously just now we proved mm -hmm. 25 degrees very good so easy very easy so this is x this is also x so x is 180 degrees minus 50 by 2 which is 65 degrees and angle oap is 90 degrees because oa will be perpendicular to oa is perpendicular to pa so angle oab is equal to 90 degrees minus 65 degrees 25 degrees this one so we careful which angle is 60 degrees here qpt you have to find out prq No, 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 no. Nothing like that. You don't need to. In one marker, two, three steps over. Question should be over. Maximum three steps. <clears throat> hmm. Everyone is saying. One twenty. Hmm. One twenty. One twenty. One twenty. How? How one twenty? Who will explain? One twenty, Shobita. Sure. So hence this. Okay. Let me. Arey ba. What? How do I? So this is the question, and if you see this angle is how much? How much is this angle? The red one. so this angle is 30 degrees right angle prq you are getting 180 degrees sadly why this is 30 this is also 30 this is 120 so this is 240 so this is 120 prq only no 120 Got it. Everyone got it. 
Yes or no? This is how you have to do it, right? So once again, 30, 30. So by angle sum property, this angle is 120. So the reflex angle is 240. Now the this arc, bigger arc, the larger arc, PQ, is subtending an angle 240 at the center. So at any other point in the segment, in the same segment, it will be 120, half of that. So 120. Clear? Okay. Next. In the figure four, AB is a chord of a circle with center O. AOC is the diameter. And AT is tangent. Prove that BAT is equal to ACB. Could you go back? Yes, I can go back when, yes. Previous question, yes, once again, they go. Let me delete. Once again. See, this angle is 60 degrees. This is 30 degree. I hope this is clear because 90 minus 60. Okay, so hence this is also 30. Isosceles triangle, same radius, so 30, 30. Now, if that is 30, 30, then this angle is 120, without doubt. Angle sum property. Okay, if that is 120, then the reflex angle is, this angle is 240. Isn't there the chord subtends double the angle at the center compared to, uh, that's what we are using. So hence, they go. So what is the, what is the arc? QP is the arc, major arc, which is subtending 240 degrees. What is the appreciation? Can you unmute and say, I didn't understand your question. <coughs> That's what so, you mean. Um, there's a theorem that says that the chord, um, which is PQ over here, hmm. subtends double the angle at the center than it does at any other point in the circle. And the same segment. So then. Yeah. Same segment. So you're right, but it has to be here. Okay. So if this is 120, this will be 60 degrees. And oh, exactly okay. same thing I'm using. So I'm exactly same thing, but this time around, this is this angle PRQ is on the opposite segment. Can you see, can you see that? It is not in the same segment. Uh, same segment as in? See, for this, this angle PRQ is the so the double of this is angle QOP reflex. Getting it? I'm using the same thing, but you are picking the wrong angle. Once again, they go. Let me just take it away. Okay, so I'm using the same theorem, but you have to pick the right angles. Okay, mm -hmm. so if this is 120, then this angle is going to be 60 degrees, half of it. But this angle is, you know, so this, this is half of the angle subtended by larger arc, this QP at the center. And how much is that angle? 240 degrees. And hence now it is subtending this angle at the segment, opposite segment. So hence this is 120 degrees. Okay, half of 240. Clear? Next. This one. I used alternate segment theorem. What is that, Aditya? Alternate segment theorem. Can you unmute and say? This question is done. This is easy. So how to do this one? So the diameter, AC is diameter. So clearly this is 90 degree. Yes or no. And if this angle is X and this angle is 90 degree as well. So angle, this angle is 
90 degree minus x and this angle is also 90 degree minus x clear so angle, bat is equal to acb did you understand all of you what did i do since since ac is a diameter so abc has to be 90 degrees and consider this to be x and clearly oat is also 90 degrees so this angle is x if then this angle is 90 degree minus x and in the triangle ABC by angle sum property C has to be 90 degree minus X and hence they are equal. Both are 90 degree minus X. Shall I proceed? Understood by all? Bolo. Okay. This we have already done, so we'll skip it. This is the theorem, but this was asked in 1920. Board paper. A tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius to the point of contact. The first theorem I told you. So we'll not do it. Same thing. Prove that the angle between the two tangent drawn from an external point to a circle is supplementary to the angle subtended by the line segment joining the point of contact at the center. Isn't it? This was the theorem again. We had done this. Which one? Prove that. This is the, these are the two tangents. Sorry this one and this one and they're saying prove that the angle between the two tangents beta drawn from an external point p let's say this is q this is r this is o right is supplementary to the angle subtended by the line segment joining the point of contact so what is the line this angle alpha and we have to prove alpha plus beta is equal to 180 degrees Yes, so we did this angle sum property of a quadrilateral because this is 90. This is 90. So alpha plus beta will have to be 180 degrees. So we had done this previously. So not doing this again. This one. PTQ. Very easy. Same thing. Application. Angle between tangent and chord. Angle made by the chord in the alternate segment. Oh, like that. Yes. But then there was, it was that that case. Just a minute. Let me see. Just a minute, folks. Uh, you can, yes. Yes, you can. Huh? This so you can. take the supplementary, the other angle. Other as in, come again. Uh, so uh, in question 21. 21. Uh, huh, yes. So, so you what did take you? the uh, you take the angle which is one one eighty minus angle QPT. QPT, huh? One eighty minus QPT, okay. Uh, and then uh, which is one twenty degree, uh -huh. and then uh, Achy, that directly angle the, is okay. equal to angle PRQ. You use it directly, huh? You can use that, but. Yeah, if you want one mark as you can use directly also, no problem. Yes, you can use that. So what uh, Aditya is using is this. So let us say you have a tangent and you have a chord. So angle made by the chord, which angle? This angle X is equal to this X. That's what you're using, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So you uh, angle made by a tangent and a chord is equal to angle subtended by the chord in the opposite segment. So you can use that also directly. Yes, it's okay. You know the proof, right? Yes. How do you, how do you prove that this angle is equal to this angle X? So you construct the radius. This one. Yes, sir. Hmm. And uh, that the other angle is 90 minus X. The, the other angle is 90 minus X. Yes. And uh, so since uh, from uh, the triangle, this angle is 90 minus x. Yes, so 90 minus x. This is 90 minus x. 90 minus x radius is equal. So this angle will be 180 x. minus, yes. So this is 2x. So this is x. Correct. Very good. You can use it directly. No problem. Good. Chali. So yes, this is done. This will be 150, 180 minus 115. No questions. Isn't it? 180 minus 115. Bolo dosto, correct? So 65 degrees. Cool. 
वेरी गुड नेक्स्ट डी दिस वन इज इजी फ्रॉम एन एक्सटर्नल पॉइंट क्यू लेंथ ऑफ द टेंजेंट टू अ सर्कल इज फाइव and the distance of q from the center is 8 radius of the circle is draw the diagram quickly circle here is q tangent this is 5 distance of q from the center is 8 8 the radius of the circle pythagoras theorem 64 minus 25 39 under root right so let's say r so r square plus 5 square is equal to 8 square okay next cd length of cd क्या फोर सेंटीमीटर यस वाई विल दैट बी अंडरस्टूड सो ए सी सी बी इज फोर एंड सी डी इज इक्वल टू फोर CD is equal to CB. Right? This is two marks. Hello. Okay. Any doubt? So once again, AC is equal to CD and CD is equal to BC. So BC will be equal to AC, and hence four four each. Shall I give you a hint? Join OC. Yes. What happened, guys? Hmm. Anyone else? No. Arjun and Arun. 
So you have to join OC. And if you have to join, when you join OC, then this angle is equal to this angle. And this angle is equal to this angle. Yes or no? So hence 2x plus 2y is 180 degrees. So x plus y is 180 degrees, 190 degrees. Right? Once again. Everybody understood this part? Why is x equals to x there? Because the two triangles are congruent. How? RHS. Which two triangles? POA is congruent to OCA. They are congruent. Why? There is a common side. There is a 90 degree. Both. And radius. Or either you can say AP is equal to AC. Or SSS. Whichever way. There are multiple ways you can prove they are, they are equal. So once again. This was the case. This is the line. This is the center. This is the tangent. And I had joined that. I had joined that. I am saying... PA is equal to CA. These two sides are equal. AO is equal to AO, common. And these are the radius. You can use SSS also. So the moment they are congruent, this is X, this is X. By the same logic, that will be Y and Y. So hence 2X plus 2Y is 180 degrees. So X plus Y is 90 degrees. And that is what you want to AOB is X plus Y. Do we need to prove that POQ is a straight line? POQ. Uh, two parallel tangents. No, you don't need to. Why would you? I did not use anyways. Uh, yes, POQ. Sorry, yes. POQ is straight line is no. No, we had a theorem. So you have to write that. That the point of contact. What was the theorem? If there are two parallel tangents the point of contact will be diameter. The Sorry, the line joining the point of contact will pass through the center. We dealt with theorem number 9 above, 9 or 10, something like that, above. It's not an NCRT theorem. Okay? It's not an NCRT theorem. But you, I don't really think that you, you can use it directly. But because if you go for proving this, it will become too huge a proof. Oh, uh, okay. So wait, take a minute. But O, O is anyways given center. Omita. O is given here to be center. So OP and OQ. That means POQ is a diameter. Why? Because 90, 90 degrees, isn't it? Did you understand? So you have to, yeah, if you want to prove it, you can always prove that. PQ is a diameter. PQ is a diameter. Why? Why is PQ a diameter? Because it is passing through O first of all. Angle OPX is equal to 90 degrees. And angle OQM is also 90 degrees. And PX and QM are parallel. That means PQ is a straight line. Right? So PX and QM are parallel. So you are saying OP is perpendicular to PX and OQ is perpendicular to OQ is perpendicular to QM and PX is parallel to QM. Therefore, OP is either parallel to OQ or OPQ is a straight line. Okay, so you can first prove that, but these are for three marks. So I would have not, I would have assumed this theorem to be true. Okay, and then there are two congruences to be proven and then, right. But if you have time, please. Uh, so what do you, in such questions, let's say if you have a doubt. So keep that in your mind, put a star mark, maybe somewhere, wherever you can, or write a question number 30 to be revisited, something like that. And then if you have time, then add that proof. Append that proof in the bottom of that, you know, leave some space. Is that understood? 
So leave some space and you think that, okay, you know, if for time permits, I'll come back and append that proof with this. So why is PQ a diameter? You can write, append it towards the end. Okay, Momita, is that clear? So if you think that, okay, you know, um, I might need to prove it once again or some bit more. So just put some, keep some space over there. Come back if you have time. Anyways, you will be left with some time and quickly add that proof. Fair enough. So these are, there were a few more similar type of questions here. So this was another proof. Um, ABCD is drawn to circumscribe a circle. Prove that AB plus CD is equal to BC plus AD. This will be also easy. So, you know, AB plus CD. So you have to break them into uh, the, the parts, right? So let's say this is X, this is X, this is Y, this is Y, this is U, this is U, and this is V, and this is B, V. So, you know, you have to, so you can clearly see AB is equal to X plus U and CD, CD is V plus Y. So this X of this can be replaced by this X and this Y can be replaced by this Y. So you'll get AD on the other side. And similarly, U plus B will be BC. I just gave you a quick, you know, uh, approach of what to do. So, right. So AB plus CD, you can see AB plus CD. Let me prove it only. AB plus CD is X plus U plus CD, Y plus V. Now rearrange them, right? X plus Y plus U plus V. So X plus Y is now AD and this is BC. So done. So AB plus CD is equal to, right? Like that. This is easy. This one similar, similar again, it was repeated. See, not many times it repeats. Similar, we just proved this one also. This is, see, see this question was in 1819, a uh, year before. Year before, similar type of questions. This one also, we just did it. All are similar type of questions. This one, prove that opposite sides of a quadrilateral circumscribing a circle, subtend supplementary angles at the center of the circle. Did you get this question? Question is this, prove that just two minutes and I'll wrap it up. Prove that the opposite sides of a quadrilateral circumscribing. This is a cyclic quadrangle basically. Prove that opposite sides of a quadrilateral circumscribing a circle or oh, circumscribing, sorry, this is inscribing, this is wrong. No, circumscribing a circle is this. So circle will be within the quadrangle. So. Something like that. Okay. So A, B, C, and D. Okay. And they're saying, uh, subtend separate, uh, opposite sides of a quadrat quadrilateral. So this is opposite side. This is the center. So, so what are they saying? The question is prove that X plus Y is 180 degrees, right? X plus Y is 180 degrees. Can you prove that? It will be easy if you really look at it. Why? Because this angle one is equal to angle one. This angle two is equal to angle two. Angle three is equal to angle three. And angle four is equal to angle four. Why are they equal? Because we had a theorem saying the line, the two tangents are equally inclined to the line joining the center and the point from where the tangents were drawn. Am I right when I write like this? So what is X plus Y? Let's write X plus Y. X is nothing but 180 degrees minus angle one plus angle two, correct? And what is Y? 180 degrees minus angle three plus angle four. Angie. Yep. So this is 360 degrees minus angle one plus angle two plus angle three plus angle four, which is nothing but if I multiply by two and divide by two, right? Now two times angle one plus angle two plus angle three plus angle four is how much? Cyclic, it's a quadrilateral, so 360 degrees. So this is 360 degrees minus 360 degrees by two. 
which is 180 degrees. Got this proof? What did I do? I wrote x first. I wrote y. Then I added. So 360 degrees minus angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 plus angle 4. But 2 times angle 1 plus 2 times angle 2 plus 2 times angle 3 plus 2 times angle 4 was 360 degrees. Angle some property of a quadrangle. So hence I replace this by 180 degrees. Is it? So angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 plus angle 4 will be 180 degrees. So 360 degrees minus this 180 degrees. Is this proof clear? So just, uh, you know, uh, spend some time, do once again, as I have already, you know, uh, gave you the direction. You can do that. Solve these. These are the, see, you can, uh, how beautifully people have written. So this you can take as a reference. How to prove, to prove is written. They have not given the given part of it. Construction is written. Okay. So elaborately, you know, so to prove. Okay. So you can start from given instead of writing all of this, start from given, then write construction, then to prove. And we know that and all that step, step by step, step by step. Right. Beautiful presentation. This is for one marker. So a rough diagram is drawn. You don't need to take a compass and start drawing there over, or, you know, circle, perfect circle and all that. Avoid doing that. Is it okay? So this is for one mark. Fair enough. So I, I'm sorry I took a little bit more time today. So, okay. So we'll stop here. In the next class, we will carry on uh, with whatever is the topic assigned to that date. Maybe we'll construction scale here. We will have a different date altogether. Is that okay? So please uh, keep solving. Tomorrow again, one set of mock papers will be released. You can solve them at home. Okay. Thank you. See you again. Bye-bye. Take care.